So I released a music video last week for the song Indoor Cat. That was the first music video I've actually put out for any musical project that I've had, though of course there have been a few abortive attempts for older bands and a few things that I made in high school like any artsy kid would. Um, but I've actually got something up on YouTube now. I'm going to be shooting another music video in a few days, and uh, I'll also be, you know, I've, I've been putting up a few of the kind of lyric videos that I've done in the last year or so. And it's kind of interesting to finally be making and releasing these things, because the truth is I actually really hate music videos. I take it for granted that if I'm going to try to exist in the marketplace, then, you know, I have to have some kind of video content. That's what I've been told by people who seem to know what they're talking about. And it's been a fun, challenging exercise, and I appreciate the help of uh, people who've provided assistance with it. I don't mean to dismiss all that. But I have a specific grudge against music videos as an art form or a, you know, a promotional media form. Um, and I think that goes beyond just a lot of the complaints people have about music videos. Now, obviously, the visual component can elevate artists or performers who might not have a high profile without that aspect or might not be capable of that level of success on their own. Um, but I'm honestly not really bothered by that part of it, right? The world is going to be full of mediocre music no matter what. It's going to be full of artists who succeed on merits that aren't strictly musical. Uh, la di da right? I'm not here to rant about the effects of MTV and video culture and how that kind of cheapened the musical culture at large. That's been a feature of the world for longer than I've been alive. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm at peace with it. What I'm more interested in is music videos that are a poor adjunct to music that works well on its own, uh, and even why I'm not really that fond of good music videos for good songs. Now, of course, part of the issue is that a lot of music videos do suck. Uh, I didn't have cable TV when I was growing up. I got well into adulthood without having seen almost any video for anything that I liked. And I remember having this realization, you know, after Vivo became a thing, maybe in 2009 or so, that uh, now I could experience this whole other dimension of the persona and the media catalog of all my favorite musicians. And for a short period, I was really excited about that before I realized that everything I was seeking out was somewhere between bland and actively embarrassing. The video that really crystallized that realization for me was All This Time by Sting, right? Which is a wonderful song, uh, an incredibly, you know, somber and elegant and moving meditation on uh, the death of his father with all sorts of really vivid, clever, lyrical imagery. I've never talked about Sting on here, and he has a lot of things that I'm kind of meh about, but the album Soul Cages is really, really brilliant, very close to my heart. And then the video is just this very dumb, shipwreck-themed comedic piece, which has no relationship to the sound or content of the song. You know, and I watched that and I thought, kind of wish I hadn't seen this, and I don't think I'm going to watch anything else like this. So I realized that the form of the music video actually probably did a lot to make certain artists that I love more broadly disliked by my generation, right? If your main way of encountering Sting or Phil Collins or 80s Genesis is these videos, that's, that's going to make a worse impression than just the song on its own. And this also applies across the alternative rock divide, right? It's not just a question of 80s boomer artists. Um, for instance, I know the Black Hole Sun video is kind of iconic, but I've always personally felt that it's pretty dreadfully stupid. But the thing is, like, I will totally admit that there are videos that might either enhance the experience of a song or define it in a way that's ultimately positive. Obviously, if we're talking about Genesis-related things, there's the Land of Confusion video, uh, the Sledgehammer video by Peter Gabriel. Those are very creative. Those are very groundbreaking. They've really come to define the song in a lot of ways for a lot of people. Um, again, you know, talking about grunge era stuff, uh, the Jeremy video really lends that song a sense of power and gravitas that it doesn't have on its own. And I'm sure there are tons of other examples that people can think of, and we'll maybe put in the comments, where the form is well used. But even with the good ones, or maybe more so with the good ones, um, you know, the more time that I spent watching videos when I, when I was finally able to, 
the more that I realized that the music video kind of supplants and suppresses the imaginative experience of the song. The thing about music is that it is actually a visual art form in a couple of ways, right? I think partly because, you know, a, a good lyric is going to evoke imagery, right? It contains sensory detail. Even if that lyric is not explicitly narrative, uh, it still has kind of a, a visual effect if it's done well. But also partly because I think music just, you know, it, it sounds like imagery if you're really focusing on it, um, listening to it intently, right? It has a quality of evoking shapes and colors and visual movement. Uh, at least it does for me, and I think it does for a lot of other people, right? And that's not about, I mean, I think that effect is true even for people who aren't like classically synesthetic in any other context. It's true if you're not high on drugs. You know, those two things might help a bit, right? But there's something about the nature of music that's naturally very connected to visual processing, I think, and where if you're really immersed in it, it creates kind of an organically visual effect on its own. So ultimately, you know, adding a fixed visual component for me ends up having the effect of flattening the overall experience, right? Watching a music video, you have your, your normal room for imaginative capacity kind of replaced with a specified thing. And, you know, I've come to realize that personally, I almost always find that unpleasant. And I like it even less when it works too well, right? Because, you know, it, it runs the risk of creating kind of the same effect that you have where you read a book where you've already seen the film, right? And, you know, you just keep seeing the movie characters in your mind's eye or what's even worse, right? You start to read the book and you get obsessed about whether or not you're seeing the, the movie characters in your mind's eye. There's the risk of a similar effect when you add a visual component to music that it actually doesn't need because it kind of creates its own visual experience, right? You're gilding the lily. Now, obviously, this is different from album covers, which I love, uh, and which do provide enough visual definition to give the album a fuller identity without supplanting the visual experience of listening to it. And I'd also say that a recording of a live performance can be quite powerful. Although, frankly, that effect only tends to work in small doses. You know, I almost never get the urge to watch a full-length concert DVD um, for reasons maybe I'll get into it another time if I, if I, you know, can explain them compellingly. There are also times when I find out what artists look like and wish I hadn't known, um, but I won't give any examples of that. So ultimately, you know, while I do respect the periodic occasions when music videos have been used in compelling or creative ways, um, it's often a form that lends itself to subpar result. But, you know, I think more than that, it, it adds something that just really doesn't need to be there and that I've, I've actually come to find a little bit unpleasant. Thank you so much for your time. I hope everybody has a good week and I'll talk to you later. Thank you.